more snow is falling down All the colored lights lighting up this town And as I walk outside Hear the Christmas choir sing Merry Christmas to you This time of year What's up everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today is Vlogmas Day 11 and today we are going to be doing a Q&A but first we're gonna start with making a holiday drink. So this drink, we're super festive over here. We have my little ornament glass, martini glass. I'm using a little Santa shooter for the shots and I have my cocktail shaker. So I'm only making one because Vinny is not a fan of like over pepperminty holiday drink. So he's drinking a glass of red wine and I'm going to make this guy. So let me pull up the recipe because I'm making my first try right here with you guys. Okay, so the recipe that we are going off of is called the candy cane martini. All right, one peppermint, light corn syrup, half and half, vodka. It wanted me to get the whipped cream vodka, but that stuff is nasty. Peppermint schnapps. White chocolate liquor, ice, and mini candy canes for garnish. So this is what we're working with. Dip the martini glass in the corn syrup first. Fill a cocktail shaker halfway with ice. Then add the vodka, white chocolate liquor, and peppermint schnapps. Add the half and half to the cocktail shaker and then stir to combine. taste test this. I'm not too sure because I don't usually like martinis and I accidentally poured double shots into everything. Well, everyone will be very drunk on Christmas. I feel like Frankie will like these. <laughs> Alright, so we are just going to be doing a super quick Q&A today. I asked you guys if you had any questions and I got a decent amount of responses. All right, so I'm going to be starting with the ones that I was sent on Instagram. I'm not going to be saying who they are from because I don't know if they want that. The first one is, if you weren't a hairdresser, what would be your other occupation? So originally before I went to go to beauty school, I originally was applying to nursing school. While they're completely opposites, I think that if I wasn't doing hair, I'd want to do something in the medical field. I also like the aspects of, I, w I don't think I'd be able to sit in a desk from nine to five every day. I like the idea of having different appointment times. So if I was like a sonogram tech or something like that, or like a nurse, it's like you have the different times in the day, like patients come in where it breaks up the day or something in sales only because I feel like I would need something commission based because if I just got a plain salary, no matter how much I worked or how hard I worked, I would just slack off. Like I'm so used to a job where I completely control how much I make. If I want to work two days a week, I can, but I'll be seeing it versus if I want to work 80 hours, I'll see it, but I'm exhausted. I just feel like that motivates me in a sense. Uh, the next question, what are your favorite skincare products? The answer to that is in my self care video. So you're gonna have to go check that out in order to see. So I honestly, I'm, blessed with pretty clear skin but what I brag. no it's not bragging it's serious because a lot of people like I'm not saying that these are the end all be all like I'm not people are like oh I drink 80 ounces of water and use Mario Divesco like no we drink a lot of alcohol <laughs> that makes a lot of people's acne worse it dries out your skin so it dries out the yeah, do have dry skin like Accutane yeah Vinny was on Accutane that's why I'm show him your skin is really clear skin though. I was on Accutane right around, <laughs> you know those commercials that came out 
I said if you were on Accutane from 2006 to 2010, See I was on Accutane in like 2007 and 2008. Exactly when they said like you should seek medical attention, but your skin is flawless. Yeah, no, can't complain. You know what? Might be worth it. Lose a few I have another head growing out of my back, but <laughs> clear skin on the front. Oh my god! But yeah, uh, so I would say Cerave. Cerave. I would say Cerave face wash and face lotion. I have a friend who's a dermatologist, PA, and she says that is the best face products for when you're on a budget. That's still good for your skin. So, all right. How long? I want to hear your response for this first. How long was your engagement? Answer, that one first. Two years. And? And give or take a couple months. Two years and one day, you knew that. Oh. Yeah, two years and one day, and then did you feel like it dragged or feel like it flew? No, it flew. So I did feel like it flew, but the way that we did it without getting stressed, and like I feel like we had a pretty real, I feel like we had a real, babe, compared to most people, we had a really stress-free way. She was stress-free, I was stressing in the <laughs> So the way that we planned it and made it relatively stress-free, even though it was a very stressful venue, uh, for those who didn't know our venue, you had to bring in everything yourself. You just rented out the space and you had to bring in tables, chairs, like microphone stands, like the sound system, like everything. We just did one or two things each month and that really helped us stay on track. And having a two-year engagement also helped us get exactly the vendors that we wanted. Like our photographer we we're in love with, Caitlin Ferris, and I hear so many people say that they wanted her, but she was booked. We booked all of the vendors booked we wanted. With us. Yeah, like, well, that, that happened once where I was like, ooh, book her. And they're like, oh, she's booked for May 24th. I was like, weird. I feel like it definitely flew, but I also remember feeling towards the end of it that I was like, oh my God, like, I'm happy we're not doing a two and a half year engagement because I just kind of like, you want to get it done. You're like, it's just this feeling like you have something like huge coming up and you just want it to be over because it's the best feeling when it's over. Best, yes. day, best day of our lives when it was done. It was just, if it went bad, I would probably feel different and be like, oh, I wish we could redo it. But it went so amazing that after I was like, no, I wouldn't wish to redo it because everything went well, so Well, the day perfect. you're just thinking like, oh my God, what's going to go wrong? And then the next day you're like, okay, nothing went wrong. So nothing can go wrong. But a lot of people don't have experiences like that. Like some people like it rains and like, we had such like, oh, like our day. Oh, even if it rained, we didn't care. Yeah, but it didn't. No, it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next question of Instagram, and the last one for Instagram is, is it hard to start your own YouTube channel, and how did you learn to edit vlogs? So the first thing I'll say to that is we- We don't know if yeah, it's hard. We are very We've new to this, this for a month. For 35 minutes. <laughs> I don't even have a watch. He said, we are very new, we're extremely small, we have seven, 617 as subscribers, so- Thank you. But, yes, thank you, but yeah, um, I wouldn't say, so, is it hard to start your own YouTube channel? So I actually have been watching YouTube since I was 15 and there are some videos on my channel that are in private because no one should see those that I've tried to make you. What videos? You know, the YouTube channel, all my YouTube videos that uh, I showed you, the ones that I used to a couple years ago. Oh, oh your, your former videos. Yeah, my former videos. That's right. I think I had like 53 still. So if any of you are still here, then let me know because that'd be really cool. But yeah, so I would say it's hard just in the sense that it's kind of in the beginning, especially when I tried to do it, I think I was around 17. You're very self-conscious and it's very, like you need to just get to this point where you're basically like, fuck it, who cares? Like even when we were like vlogging in public and like all oh, the drive-thru workers are always like, oh, do you have a YouTube channel? It's gonna be like, yeah, I do. We're like, it happened yesterday. Yeah, like it's just like, but that's what I'm so happy. Yeah, but just like I'm saying, like who cares? Yeah. Like who cares? Like a lot of my clients were like, oh, I'm watching your videos. I'm like, oh, cool. Do you like them? Like you just can't be like weird about it, I guess. And she asked, how did you learn to edit vlogs? Me. Yep. So I uh, learned how to edit vlogs on the fly. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then Abby just watched me, mm -hmm. and then she took over editing. I'm. She, she took my job. <laughs> so. A couple of the videos that I tried to make a couple months ago, which still also might be on private, I was doing on my phone with iMovie. And honestly, I was torn whether I wanted to splurge on the Canon G7X and the MacBook and the Final Cut Pro. But honestly, I just did it and I do think it is very important. It's pricey, but it is an investment. So Vinny, I couldn't edit for the life of me. I was so used to my iMovie. I couldn't even figure out how to like split the screen. Even watching YouTube didn't help me. It wasn't until Vinny took over and then I just watched him where I kind of just like learned on the fly. So I wouldn't say, it was definitely tricky, but I think we got the hang of it like less than a week. You got it like the first day. That's because I'm super smart. Mm -hmm. Which leads us to our next question. This was all written down from um, YouTube. 
And then I think I have some on Twitter DMs, but I'll do this first. What is Vinny studying? Computer science. Mm-hmm. And what's your official major as of now? Well, I just switched to applied mathematics and statistics. Mm -hmm. And then I think someone also asked, um, did you work before? What made you decide to go back to school? Um, yes, I worked as an electrician, an electrical apprentice for four years. And it was not the job for me. And I was not happy working in a work truck. Nothing against the people yeah. that do it, but it's... No, if, no, there's plenty of great people in the trade, but there's plenty of bad people in the trade. Yeah. And it was just not the right work for me. And then one day, I was really bad at school. I was not a school like person. Like in high school? Yes. I didn't go to college right after high school. I was not... D didn't even think about going to school. I, no one in your family really I did. didn't even think I would get accepted into school. Mm -hmm. I barely graduated. And then... Four years into hating my work, I just looked up what's the hardest degree you can get. Typical. Yeah, because I felt like I never challenged myself and everything kept saying like, oh, computer science is one of the hardest, computer science is one of the hardest. I wasn't taking physics because that's the hardest one, but so I, I chose computer science and do pretty good. Yeah, yeah. you're doing awesome. Mm -hmm. Got around a year left. Yep. You're killing it. Mm -hmm. And that's what made you decide to go back to school. That is exactly what made me go back to school. Yeah, nothing against electric, but I feel like that's one of those things where you either like love it or hate it. Like if you love it, that's an awesome job, but if you hate it, you can't ignore it. Does that make I sense? I hated it. Yeah, you hated it. That was I hated little... every, everything about it. When did you get Beasley? 2017. February 2017, she was 10 to 12 weeks old. Yep. Uh, were you high school sweethearts? No. We knew each other in high school. No, I used to be really fat. So Abby didn't pay attention to me until after I graduated. It's not true. And I dropped about 65 pounds. And then she saw me in the gym one day and ran into me. No, literally like ran into me. Yeah. And then asked me what she should get for lunch or dinner or whatever after she was done with the gym. I was like, I don't know, whatever you want. You called me a pretty tomato. Oh yeah, cause she's like, sorry I'm sweaty and red like a big tomato. And what'd you say? You just said it. Hold the you, prettiest tomato I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's how I snagged her. Uh-huh. So I was... Well, it took about like another like year or two. No, it was only a couple months from then. Was it? Yeah. I thought it was like a year. No, it wasn't bad at all because um, so we met on my 17th birthday, like the actual day at your house, and mm -hmm. then I saw you at the gym, and then I think only a week later it was bedrock. Someone asked me how did I build up my clientele. Honestly, I did get very lucky with it. Like, I... Got so we're gonna actually be doing a decade in review video where I'm gonna go more into detail about all of this but I graduated beauty school in 2014 and I had until so May of 2014 and I was able to quit my salon assistant jobs and go full-time on my own by I think April of 2015 so less, uh, less than a year so I got very lucky the main thing I would say is just do everyone's hair make it special so I'm like everyone's really big with the prices and like you cannot like don't short sell yourself, but you can't just start charging full price and expect people to come with you. Don't make it your price because then we'll be like, well, isn't that your price anymore? Call it a special. So I remember I did my sister's balayage. Three of her friends texted me. Three of their friends texted me. Now you have six. And it kept kind of rollerballing and I charged a very low price. Like, I don't know where you guys are from, but I'm in New York where traditional balayage with a toner blowout will run anywhere from two to $500. And I was charging like $100 for the works just to get people in the door. And honestly, 99% of them are still my clients. And obviously they don't pay that anymore, but they just, I've been with me since my kitchen days. So I think the biggest tip I would have is just make personal connections with them, post them on Instagram and develop a relationship on Instagram with everybody and just do a lot of people. All right, the last question was from one of our watchers on YouTube. She commented this. She said, kids, when, and how many? I'll let you answer that one. Zero, <laughs> never, absolutely none. Right? We have one, we have Beasley. Honestly, we are, we got married pretty young. So we got married at 23 and 25, and now I'm 24 and he's 26. And once we went on our honeymoon to Europe, 
We have gotten such a travel bug and now we really kind of want to go everywhere. So we want to go back to Europe at least twice. We want to go to Hawaii. We want to go, we want to travel cross country. Like there's just so many things we want to do on that aspect of our life. Vinny is finishing school and then we'll hopefully get a job in his field, maybe in the city. We want to see where this leads us. I want to do more renovations to the house, obviously our kitchen, maybe a pool. Like there's just so many things on our minds first that we kind of want to focus on before thinking about kids. As for how many, honestly, we've been thinking one and we're kind of like, we'll see how it goes from there. I don't see it being more than two. We're each one of three and I feel like that's when it starts to get very chaotic. I didn't be fine with like twins and then you're done for life. I go through phases also, if you can't tell. Like time last year, we were kind of a little bit more like, ooh, maybe in a couple of years. And now I think maybe because everyone's asking us because we got married, we're kind of like, oh no, like five to 10 years. So if it happens right now, we'd obviously be happy about it. But if we can control it, we have just things that we want to do first. So I would say between one and two kids, anywhere from three and 11 years from now. All right, guys. So that was our fairly quick and short Q&A. If you have any more questions, please make sure to leave them down below. I hope you guys have been enjoying our Vlogmas and we will see you tomorrow for our Vlogmas day 12. Bye. Bye. We need some 